Hey everyone at Praise Chapel Revival Oxnard. This is Pastor Johnny Montillo welcoming you to our Wednesday midweek service. And I hope and I pray that tonight's message be an encouragement for you. And as always, that you apply tonight's biblical principles in your daily walk with Jesus Christ. I wanted to first and foremost thank the shepherd of our church, Pastor Mondo Carrillo and his wife, Sister Veronica Carrillo, for all that they do for the body of Christ. Continue to keep them and the entire body of Christ in your daily prayers. Always continue to uh, keep our sanctuary in prayer. It's still undergoing instruction, uh, construction. rather. Um, and so in the next couple of weeks, hopefully we, get, we will open up the doors to our Wednesday midweek service so we can uh, enjoy and sup in God's word together um, as a body of Christ in person. With all that being said, let us just open up in a word of prayer so we could dive right into tonight's word. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, because your word has always its mighty, powerful, wonderful, and amazing, and amazing. It guides us, it leads us, and it blesses us, Father God. And I pray that as we enter into your word tonight, that you open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive what you would have for us, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father God, that we experience your love, that we experience your power during tonight's message. And Holy Spirit, as always, we surrender tonight's service unto you, and we pray with expectation that through your prayer, through your power, Holy Spirit, that lives will be set free, renewed, redeemed, and delivered in this message tonight. These things we ask in the name of Jesus we pray, amen and amen. I want to talk to you tonight about can you give the glory to God even in the deepest times of suffering? In 1860, there was a young missionary named Alan Gardier. He set out on a, a journey to reach the indigenous people of, of, of Tierra del Fuego. It was a remote region, a rugged region at the southern tip of South America. Allen was passionate about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with those who had never heard it, those who had, had no, no, uh, no exposure at all to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he was up for the challenges that laid ahead. However, the mission didn't go as planned. Uh, when he, when he, uh, before he could arrive, his, his boat, his, his ship, it had been wrecked and the supplies ran out. And he and his crew were stranded in harsh and unforgiving environmental pains and struggles. And as the days turned into weeks and the weeks turned into months, Alan and his companions, they faced starvation, extreme weather, and illness. And one by one, all the members of his crew begin to succumb to the conditions and begin to die. And only Alan was left. And he knew he was dying. But even in his final moments, even in the deepest point of suffering, he chose to glorify God. When his body was discovered some time later, they discovered his journal. And in his journal found beside his body, Alan wrote this last entry, his last words. He said, I am overwhelmed with a sense of the goodness of of God. I'm overwhelmed with the sense of the goodness of God. These words weren't of a man who was who was who was suffering and who was dying. They 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 they, they he was no doubt suffering and going through pains, but rather than 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 write about those sufferings and those pains, what he chose what he chose to embrace was glorifying God in those final moments, glorifying God in, in, in the deepest times of facing unimaginable suffering, he chose to give God the glory in his darkest hour. Will you and I begin to do that also? Because you and I go through times of suffering. You and I also go through times of pain. But just like Alan Gaudier, we need to give God the glory no matter what situation we face. And as we explore some scriptures tonight, I pray and I hope that we reflect on what it means to glorify God in every circumstance, even when life doesn't go as planned. Because life has a way of throwing us into the deep waters, the deep end, when we least expect it. And it could be sudden illness, it could be financial troubles, or, or relationship issues that seem beyond repair. And in these moments, in these challenging times, in these darkest hours, these moments often test our faith. And they make us wonder if God is truly in control. Have you ever been that like that at times? Going through a deep struggle and you begin to wonder, God, are you even in control? And when you ask these deep questions and your faith is tested in those challenging times, can you still give God the glory no matter what the situation? Today, as we dive into some scriptures, tonight as we dive into some scriptures, I hope that you and I will, will, will explore what it means to glorify God in these dark moments. As we took a, take a look at some scriptures tonight of, of, of people who went through unimaginable suffering in the Bible, 
no matter what they went through, they chose to worship God through it all. And through these scriptures that we're going to go into tonight, I pray that we'll hear what God is saying about enduring trials with a heart of praise rather than a heart of discontent. Open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 16. And Peter writes, However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Will you and I be unashamed in the suffering that we face? In the early days of the church, being a Christian wasn't uh, just difficult. It was, it was very dangerous. It wasn't just hard. It was dangerous, and your life was at stake. And Peter wrote this letter to Christians who were scattered across Asia Minor, many of whom were experiencing severe persecution, severe trials, even death. They were being targeted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And the Roman Empire, with, 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 with all these different gods that they worshipped and all these different things, that this pagan worship that the Roman Empire was involved in, saw the exclusive worship of Jesus as a threat to their empire. Christians were often arrested, tortured, and even killed uh, for refusing to renounce their faith. And Peter's message to these believers, it's profound. And I believe it speaks to us truly today. Don't be ashamed if you suffer for being a Christian. Instead, see it as a reason to glorify God. In a world that, 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 that mocks and mis mistreats us, and they did the same back in Peter's time, Peter urged these believers to stand firm and give God the glory, even in the deepest times of suffering. This wasn't just uh, pretending that suffering wasn't painful, because suffering is painful for each and every one of us. It was about recognizing that the honor, the honor lied within suffering for Christ, knowing that they were walking in the footsteps of the Savior. Now let's bring this closer to home. In the modern context, suffering as a Christian is going to look different than it was back then. You may not be thrown into prison for your faith, but you might face ridicule, rejection, or even isolation at times. Perhaps you've been mocked for your faith, or, 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 or maybe your family uh, doesn't understand your commitment to Christ and has distanced themselves from you. The suffering is real. It hurts at times. Even though it's not as extreme as what those early Christians faced, it still hurts to have that persecution and to have that suffering take place just for having faith in Jesus Christ. But God's reminding us in these scriptures, this scripture rather, not to be ashamed of the gospel. Our culture might try to silence us, might try to make us feel small or even paint uh, us in a different light than the biblical truths have uh, to say about Christians who walk in the faith. But God is telling us to stand tall, to wear the name of Jesus Christ with honor and to give him glory in every situation, especially in the suffering times. When we face opposition, we have a choice. Will we shrink back in fear and shame or will we rise up and glorify God for the privilege of bearing his name no matter what suffering we go through? Because God is calling us to a deeper level of faith and commitment in him. He's telling us that our suffering is not in vain. When we suffer for our faith, we are sharing in Christ's suffering. And that is something to be proud of, not to be ashamed of. God is asking us to trust Him enough to praise Him, even when it feels like the world is against us. To praise Him, even when it feels like your friends are against, against you. To praise Him, even when it seems like everything's falling apart. And He's reminding us that His name is worthy of any cost. And that our witness is in times of trial, can bring him great glory and honor. The book of Job, chapter 1, verse 20 through 22. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head, and then he fell to the ground and worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised in all this. Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Can you worship? Can you give God the honor and the glory in the midst of extreme loss like Job did? The story of Job is one of the best examples of faith in the face of suffering. Job, as we know, was a man who had it all. He had wealth, faith, uh, family, health, and a deep relationship with God. But in a series of events, he lost everything. 
His livestock was stolen. His servants were killed. And worst of all, all his children died in a terrible accident. In the span of one single day, Job's whole world was turned upside down. Have you ever felt like that at times? Where in the span of just one instant, your world becomes turned upside down. And one, and one thing that occurs, your world becomes turned upside down. And how did Job respond to this overwhelming loss? It says he tore his robe and shaved his head. These were traditional signs of mourning in, the, in that time during the culture. That's what they would do. They would, they would shave their head and they would tear their robe. But what he did next is, is what sets Job apart. He fell to the ground in worship. He fell to the ground in worship. Job didn't curse God. Job didn't blame God. Instead, he acknowledged God's sovereignty and gave him glory, saying the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Job recognized that everything was a gift from God, even loss, even what happens, even what occurs in our lives. And Job did something that was truly blessed. He chose to glorify God. You and I all face loss at some point in our lives. It might be the loss of a loved one, a loss of a relationship, or a loss of your health, whatever the case may be. And these moments can shake us to our core and challenge us and challenge our faith in ways that we may never have imagined. And in these times, you and I, you and I have to do something that is critical. We, we, we become often tempted to question God's goodness or even turn away from Him. But we have to do something critical, something different. We have to have that perspective change that Job's story gives us. That perspective change that no matter what happens, God is still in control and is still worthy of glory and honor. God is telling us in His scriptures, He's inviting us to worship Him, not just when things are well, but even in our deepest pain. He's invited us to give him glory. He's, he's commanding us at times even to give him glory, even in our deepest pains. God is asking us to trust that he is still in control, even when life feels like it's out of control. So no matter what, if life feels like it's out of control, God is still in control. And he's challenging us to find our security, not in the things that we have, not in ourselves, but in him and him alone. And he's reminding us of that ability to glorify him and loss, that it's a powerful testimony to the world. I believe that God is asking us this evening, asking us to hold on tighter to him, even when everything else seems stripped away. Perhaps he's telling us that, 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 that all that we need is him, because that's a truth. That even in the darkest valleys, he's with us. Even in the darkest places, in the darkest times, he's worthy of glory and praise. God is also revealing to us that our worship in times of loss, what it stands is, has a declaration of our faith. It's a statement that says, God, I trust you even when I don't understand what's going on. God, I trust you even when everything's crumbling around me. See, he's calling us to worship him, not just with words, but with our very lives surrendering all to his will. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. And the verses read, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Will you give God honor and glory in your trials? Will you even express joy in those trials, understanding that God is still doing something great and awesome, even in the hard times? James was writing to a group of Christians who were also experiencing persecution and trials, much like Peter was writing to. But his words were, were, were counterintuitive at first. How can we consider trials to be a source of joy? It doesn't make sense to the natural person. Most of us don't naturally rejoice when we face difficulties. Yet James calls us to a higher, deeper, and more faith-filled perspective. He's teaching that the trials are not just a random act of misfortune. They just don't happen randomly, but are allowed by God to test and strengthen our faith. 
That's why you could be joyful in the trials. That's why you could be, you could give him glory in the trials because you know he's doing something awesome and he's strengthening you during those times. The testing that James refers to is not about God trying to make us fail. Rather, it's like testing gold in a fire. The heat burns away the impurities, leaving something pure and valuable. In the same way, our faith is tested through trials to develop perseverance which in turn leads to spiritual maturity. And the spiritual maturity is not just about knowing more Bible verses, speaking the Bible lingo, or attending more church services. It's about becoming more like Christ in character and in our ability to trust God in every situation that we face. See, we face trials. And when we face trials, our first instinct is often for, to, to pray for them to end. God, can you end this? We want relief. We want healing. We want resolution as quickly as possible. We want God to alleviate this issue. But James challenges us to see trials, challenges, and suffering differently. What if instead of asking God to take away our, our trials, we asked him to help us grow through them? Instead of asking God, take this away. What if we prayed, God, I know you're strengthening me and you're helping me grow through this. And I praise you and give you honor and glory for strengthening me and making me a stronger Christian in each and every way. What if we trusted that God has a purpose in our pain, for our pain, and he's using that to shape us into people that he's called us to be? See, God is asking us to trust that he is at work in our lives, even when we can't see it calling us to embrace our trials as opportunities for growth rather than obstacles to challenge our comfort. God encourages us with scriptures like this to shift our focus from the temporary pain of the trial to the eternal glory that comes from being refined by it. And in this, he's reminding us that our perseverance in the face of trials brings him glory. Perhaps he's inviting us to a deeper walk with him when we go through trials, where we see trials not as punishments, but as instruments of his grace, that he's teaching us to find joy, not in the trial itself, but in what the trial is producing in us, a faith that is stronger, a heart that is purer, a life that reflects more Christ, and a life that gives honor and glory to God no matter what we are facing. See, our trials have a purpose, and that purpose is our maturity and completeness in and through Him. And this should draw us to glorify Him, not just when the trials are over, not just when the victory comes, but even when you're going through those trials, trusting that He is working all things out together for the good of us, those who love Him. You see, what it's all about right now is glorifying God, no matter what we face, Glorifying God, no matter what is going on. Giving God the glory, even in the midst of trials, struggles, loss, difficulties. No matter what, being reminded and embracing that no matter what happens, God still deserves the glory. And the first verse you read in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16 Peter reminded us not to be ashamed if we suffer as Christians, but to praise God, give him the glory for the privilege of bearing his name. Because in suffering, we, in suffering for him, we bear his very name. And as we learned in Job, in the midst of unimaginable loss, he chose to worship, declaring that the Lord, the Lord's name should be praised. And our trials, they're opportunities for joy. They're opportunities to glorify God. They're opportunities to give Him the honor and the glory. So the question tonight is, in your trials, have you been complaining? In your losses, have you been complaining? In your difficulties, have you been complaining? Or have you been giving God the honor and the glory? For something changes when we begin to say, thank you, God, that you're strengthening me to make it through this. And not only make it through this, make it through stronger because I believe he's building strong Christians formidable Christians Christians who don't see just what's happening in the natural but knowing that in the spiritual God is creating strength comfort and firm Christians
Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, because your word is mighty, powerful, wonderful. It's amazing. It guides us, it leads us, and it watches over us. But most importantly, Father God, it reminds us that you are worthy of honor and glory no matter what. Through these uh, uh, three key um, blocks of scripture we read tonight, Father God, I pray that they become embedded in our hearts. Like David said, uh, your word I have, I have hidden in my, in my heart, that we may, we may retain those, those scriptures for use when we go through difficult times, for use when we go through loss, for use when we face trials, that we may be reminded that in and through you, in and through you, we'll make it through and we can give you the glory when we're going through it, when we're coming out, and when we're about to go through a trial. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In your mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Tonight, I wanted to invite you in this altar moment to lay it all out, to be reminded of how strong you can be made in the trials, to be reminded that God deserves the honor and the glory. Perhaps you've forgotten that. You need to be reminded tonight that in and through God, you could succeed, you can come through victorious, but most importantly, even in the darkest times, give him glory and watch his hand at work. Let us pray. And it's bringing me to my knees And I'm crying out Lord, I need you now To come and see about me And why is this life so hard? And why do you seem so far? But if this cup won't pass Help me to stay steadfast Let your will be done You get the glory from this You get the glory from this No matter what I have to go through in this world As long as you get the glory from me Please give the glory from this.